and you know the problem isn't that these answers aren't there. The problem is is that kids think if they grew up in the church and they never heard the answers, then the answers don't exist. John, the next one uh, is a really great question for resources that I think you'll have um, some awesome answers to, but I'm going to attempt a couple of recommendations as well. This listener writes in, my granddaughter is about to graduate from high school in South Carolina. Her parents are not certain she's ready for post-secondary education. They're wondering about any organizations that might provide her an experience that would strengthen her faith and mature her personally. This could be volunteer or paid. Thanks for your help. Uh, there's tons of them, and the reason that there's tons of opportunities is because this is a. There's two problems here that people are uh, reacting to. The first is the um, diminishing returns of higher education, where it, you know, essentially there's there, there's a level in which higher education really helps, but the new masters is the new bachelors. But then there's that larger thing of whether college education is required for a lot of the jobs that are happening today, and whether. The way higher education tends to function, which is one Duke University student is a set of a practice of just jumping through the hoops that somebody's set up, and when you're done, poof, you're an educated person. Um, th that it's it's having diminishing returns, um, not only in employment, but there's high loans involved and all of that. So so that's one part of it. The other part of it is. Uh, what we've called in our book, Practical Guide to Culture, um, perpetual adolescence, uh, where adolescence used to be thought of as 13 to 18. Now it's widely seen to be 11 to nearly 30. Uh, and you can see this both in how people consume higher education, you know, changing their major, how many people don't actually get employed in the major of their choice, uh, but also just the risky behavior uh, that comes along with it. Um, certainly the students taking over campuses that we've seen on certainly Evergreen State University and other places where the basically the students can tell the teachers what they can. Um, there's just so many aspects of this uh, that make higher education a much different calculation than it was a generation ago. So much so that even uh, it's very mainstream now for one of the experiences between high school and college to be a gap year where you don't go right away. There's just a difference between an 18 year old uh, right out of high school going to college and you know somebody who's had an experience out in the world working, apprenticing maybe. And I, I think that those are all, you know, point to options. So let me just name a bunch of the ones that I want. You, th This questioner listed two things that they wanted uh, an experience like this to provide, something that would strengthen her faith and mature her personally. Um, those are two different things, and it's important to kind of hold the, although they're related and it's important to kind of deal with them specifically. There are wonderful college prep programs when it comes to faith, when it comes to expanding a student's understanding of um, worldview and all the aspects of faith that they may not have gotten in church or in youth group. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Summit Ministries. Summit uh, has held the gold standard, as Chuck Colson put it years ago, uh, for preparing kids for college. I think they've done it really well. They've had to pivot because of the pandemic, um, whereas most of their programming was here in person in Colorado in a remarkable old hotel. Uh, that has its own character uh, and its own uh, really cool kind of way of creating community uh, in a two-week experience. Uh, what John's trying to say is it's haunted. I, I actually have often compared it to the island on the, that show Lost. <laughs> have you ever watched that show Lost with multiple seasons and the, the island itself is a character and you can't figure out how? That's pretty right. much what the hotel is. Um <laughs> But they've uh, they've pivoted, so they've got some uh, innovative ways of offering that training. Uh, I think they're great. Worldview Academy is a, another program that uh, caters to students that are even a little bit younger than at, at Summit. Uh, it's a one-week program. They have remarkable instructors, and it's a great community experience. And that's one that you can start with your child before they graduate. And it's a great um, you know, it, it's a great experience because you can, you know, get it one or two or three times before you graduate. Uh, my friends out at, uh, at the Impact 360 Institute, which is in South Georgia, this is a smaller program, so not nearly as much space, but their immersion program is a two week program. All of these programs are designed to um, sharpen worldview or to help kids think about their faith. Uh, in a community where their questions are taken seriously, they have an exposure and, and an opportunity to actually talk to mentors about these questions. 
Uh, I'm just stunned. And Shane, you are too. I know we've talked about this. How many students walk away from their faith saying, I don't have an answer to this. And you're like, I know seven answers to that. And they're all really good. And you know, the problem isn't that these answers aren't there. The problem is, is that kids think if they grew up in the church and they never heard the answers, then the answers don't exist. And right now we live in the golden age of answers. They're all there. Um, the other thing I would pitch is the idea of a full gap year. Uh, a full gap year is a different sort of game, but it just puts students at a new level. And even Ivy League schools are very, very open to uh, uh, gap years because, again, a 19-year-old is better than an 18-year-old, particularly one that's had experience. So if you think about Impact 360, uh, the Impact 360 Institute, I taught there just a few weeks ago, remarkable group of, uh, I want to say 60 or 70 students, not a huge uh, capacity, but they're expanding next year, uh, new facilities um, south of Atlanta. Uh, they do a terrific job with their gap year. Um, Summit also has a, a semester. It's not a full gap year, but a semester. And Worldview Academy also has a um, gap year. Uh, my friend Adam Donyes also has a that's in Missouri. Uh, that's more leadership focused, um, less academic, uh, but more leadership focused and spiritual formation. So that's right for some students, especially uh, he's got a, a, an interesting program for young athletes, basketball players that have a potential to play bigger, but they need more at, at bigger schools, but they need, um, um, you know, maybe more uh, time maturing uh, physically, but also emotionally and spiritually. So there's there, there's just a lot of those programs, and I think all of those would be helpful. Those are the top in my list. I don't know if you have any others, Shane, that you can think of, um, but there's always that opportunity of just, you know, go get a job for a year, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know and, and, and stay within a community, and I think that's right for some as well. When I read, uh, back when I read Michael Crichton's uh, Jurassic Park novels after seeing the movie, there's this one quote that didn't make it into the movie where um, Ian Malcolm asks one of the kids, so what do you want to do when you grow up? And the kid says, I don't know. I have no idea. And he said, good. The smart ones never know at your age. And, uh, and, and you know, there's some, there's some truth to that. That's a fun take on it. There is a lot of pressure to figure out who, you, who you're going to be and what you're going to do in really specific terms, uh, especially as high school nears its close. And I remember feeling that pressure. So I was homeschooled most of the way and then did co a kind of co-op private school arrangement through a lot of high school. Um, and I ended up doing the basic, basically the equivalent of a, a DIY gap year where I went to a bunch of uh, writing conferences, um, did the circuit that, got my practice there, um, tried my hand at some fiction writing. And then I ended up uh, going to the Focus on the Family Institute, which is no longer active um, but it was for quite some time. And it was kind of like the little brother of Summit, but longer, you know, so they did like a whole semester. Um, and I did the summer of 2009. And it was just a tremendous experience. And I know that it, it, it incorporates a lot of the same stuff that all the programs that you recommended did. Um, there was a marriage and family component, and then there was a, a worldview and apologetics component. And we kind of split the time between those while having you know, um, <clears throat> leadership building exercises and um, making good friends and building our faith and then like climbing mountains and, and whitewater rafting and stuff. So it was a really, it was just tremendously formative for me. And then I ended up taking some intern internships in DC while I studied part-time um, online for college. So it was, it was very much a, a cobbled together DIY thing, but I would, um, I probably wouldn't change uh, much at all about the way I did it because it worked out so well. Um, and, and provided so many opportunities for me to um, just mature my thinking and and try things out, especially when I got to D.C. and not everyone around me was a Christian <laughs> or shared my assumptions. But uh, I would say, you know, on a on a meta level, start. Uh, I, I would encourage um, uh, this listener to uh, to get this this young woman who is about to graduate high school to start asking some some questions about life priorities, not about you know, the career thing necessarily, like what are you going to do when you grow up? Hurry, 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 decide, because you're almost grown up. But what is it that, you know, your goal in life is? Where are, where are you going? What are your chief values that you want to fulfill and remain true to throughout? And get, get specific on that. Don't just say, you know, I want to glorify God with my life. That's great. That's a good place to start. But, the you know, the Westminster Confession gives you that much. You should be able to 
um, write out sort of a life purpose statement, which is open to revision later on. And I actually did an exercise like that where I went through this book that was about planning the next five years of your life. And, um, and it helped me, and I, I apologize, I'm blanking on the title right now, but you can probably find something very much equivalent. It's been a while. I'm, I'm 32 now. Um, but it, it allowed me to chart out uh, an explicit mission for my life that was open to revision that every goal I wrote down after that had to be serving in some way. It had to be you know, actively moving in that direction. And that was that was just really helpful, and um, and it allowed me to get my bearings in important ways spiritually and, and intellectually. And then just in my in terms of my attitude, so many young people um, I meet are just in this mode of confusion and drifting through life and trying to figure out, well, you know, what's 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 next? I guess college is the next thing, and I'll I'll do that. And that's how you end up in bad situations spiritually and financially. So you mentioned the the ever-diminishing returns of a college education. That's just a reality you need to think about. Male or female, um, you know, just beginning your undergraduate studies or looking at, at, at a higher level into the graduate or postgraduate um, phase, you're going to have to count the cost financially because so many people get bound up by massive debt going into college and then are miserable about it for the next couple of decades and it interferes with their family lives and stuff, you got to figure out what you're willing to do there and what the alternatives are. And many of these gap year programs are going to help you um, answer those questions. But just just deciding up front that you're not going to drift into something, especially not a massive financial commitment, is wise. I think it's good for, uh, it's it's a good and God-pleasing thing for Christians to do. And um and it'll reap, you know, it'll help you reap benefits later on in your life. So, God bless, uh, God bless you. It sounds like this is a grandparent who just wants to um, help disciple and coach a granddaughter into the next phase here, and that's a wonderful desire. And um, you know, I pray it succeeds, and that this young woman becomes a uh, a great instrument for God's kingdom. 